cast that livey straight in next to the rocks and it's not all we're after. I wouldn't have minded a barra. It's nice and silver. But a little queenie, or not so little, probably an average size queen. Queen fishing out the back there. Woo! Stay on the fish, man. Oh! Going crazy, as they do. They don't mind jumping. Probably put up another jump. Bring that close here. Alright, try to let him go in the water. Not too heavy a drag on him. Just enough to keep him under control. There you go. Try to just put it up there. Swallowed that down, didn't he? Yeah, I think we need to cut it off mate, I'm happy to. Stuff. Thank you very much for that tubs. Always nice to see them swim away. Yep. Alright. Little Pat Nostal rig straight in. And we're just using some baits at the moment. We'll cast some uh, the net for some baits. Got some good ones. This is really roughed up now. That's on the dropper loop. You can see sinker on the bottom. Sits like that in the water with the fish swimming around. Alright. It's just a bit of a worry if you've got rough line there, if you hook a big fish, it could easily break through. That's the reason why you've got the monofilament on, because it's super tough and the fish can do plenty of damage to it. Sinker. I'll tie another little loop in here, just a simple one. Just over the top. What I'll do is just cut that off. Looks a bit messy. And I'll cut that off just here. Tie the sinker on to the where the hook just was. Doesn't matter if it breaks off so much. Let it lead it through, that loop through there. Sinker back through it. There we go. And now on this new loop. Feed the hook through. Sit nice and tight. Slide the hook through. Pull it up tight. Oh, we've got a new rig. There we go. Got a live bait sitting down the back here. I just uh. Oh. Nice live mullet, perfect baits for jewfish, barramundi, queenfish of course. Just need a few little scales, pop them in under there, make sure the barb's clean. And I'm going to pop in right in the channel of that rock. Funny enough, when we come at low tide, this is like about uh, four metres up out of the water and on this side it's huge. 
but there's a big gutter right between this rock and that rock so I know that's a nice clear passage through there and I'm going to park this live bait right in the hole Line out when it gets down to the bottom, about five meters deep at the minute. Flip it over, check the drag, and then a little bit stronger. Put the live bait pump on. All right, or anything that's coming down through that crack, like something's bunging with it now. Oh, there's something down there. And the mullet's not real happy. Get ready, hopefully uh, in a second we'll hook up. It's just one of those real fishy places. So we're using some live bait. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, what is it? Barrel. Oh, barrel, was it? Oh, I dropped him. Dropped him in the jump. There you go. Barramundi. Just didn't get the hook in. Okay, well that's a good sign. No Monday there. Get the live bait, just get down through there and up. Clear all the little scales so he's swimming. And I'll knock it straight down in that hole again. Wow, Barramundi crunch today. Was he? <laughs> oh, he hit it pretty hard and I got him, but just didn't hang on. Yeah, well, you've got a 50% chance of fishing where you are. So go left, you fuck. Say that again, Tux. <laughs> Ten chance where you're fishing. If you go left, you're in a hell of a lot of trouble. If you go right, you're, trouble, you're, you're yeah, a whole lot of trouble that you probably won't land. If it goes right, you'll be pretty much. Well. Oh. All right, here we go. Fish is there in the right spot. Got three live baits: one this side, one in the middle, one out the back. And Tubbs uh, worked pretty hard at catching some nice mullet about that big. Not the tiny little ones, those sort of nice medium ones. That uh, no Jewfish barra or Queenie or Trevally or Cod can resist. And it's a totally different place at uh, low tide, but let me tell you, there's always bait here. Always plenty of action, bigger predators cruising around. You might have just gone a bit high up on that rock there. I might just pull in and cast again. I need to be up. Oh. I need to just be. Yeah, I was just going to go in on the mouth of that. Thing. Yeah, that's the gut. Yeah, I just was a bad yeah, cast. <laughs> yep, got on the mouth. Yeah, that's not bad. Have to be a little bit closer. But there you are. That gives you a chance. Well, we know there's another rock out in here. Quite a big one, actually, across there. Alright, it's a waiting game. Mr. Barra. Oh, oh, get on there. 
Oh, what is that? How are you? I'll try to get him back. It's not a big one. But it's a barramundi. Oh, I think. Oh, something ate him. That got eaten then. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that got eaten. Wow. That got eaten then, look. Look at that. Jeez, something fairly stubborn. Absolutely smashed it. Had the bar on for a second and something ate it. Woo! Snapped through my leader. Pull that in about a metre, Matt. Right, I'll have to put a new rig on. I'll show you how I do that. Wow. Two barra, zero. The barra winning, and whatever that was, could have been a big cod or a, or a uh, shark. All right, so what I'm gonna do is retie a knot on here. This is called an FG knot. So first of all, what I have to do is uh, Get a bit of leader and some heavy stuff. Oh, I normally use the uh, Oshia, but I haven't got any Shimano Oshia at the minute. So I'm just going some of the trusty old mono here. Right, snap that off. Okay. Gosh. So we'll give you our Alright, our braid. Ooh, yeah. And what I like to do is just bring it under. I keep the rod in the rod holder first of all. And then I just wrap it over the top like that. So around she goes like that. It just sits on there. Okay, and then I come around that way. Back over that way. Around that way. And I go all the way up until it's about 16 mil. 15, 16 mil long. So just over one centimetre. Just kind of work it up and back. Now, the reason why I take my time and get these get this knot done because it's the strongest knot out there. It's incredible, the FG. We just uh, can't do better, so you might as well put the best on. It gives you the best chance of catching those big fish. All right, let's push all that up. As you can see, it's about 10, 10 mil there. Let's go a little bit further up. I'm only using 30 pound braid. I'm attaching it to this 55 pound line. All right, just gonna give it a few more. And that's about it. Now I just do a half inch over both of them. Moisten it up. And push that nice and high, get it all tidy. That's how thin the knot's going to be. Okay, now for the important part. I'll just have to bend down and get my little lock. Let's see. Okay, this is the most important part of the FG. So you get the block and you wrap the braid around it. Like that. Now, to get this knot, knot nice and tight and right into the mono, really biting into the mono, there's no way you can do it with your hand. So if you were to hold it with the, that hand, you'd cut your fingers for sure. So from this side, I can get maximum leverage. Really get it in there. And basically, once you've done that, that's 95% of the knot done. And just do a few little half hitches now just to tidy it up and tie her off. So just get the uh, the braid. It's a bit messy there, but you can see the knot. So all I do now is just do about three. About three little half hitches. So that's one, go around both lines, pull it down, nice and good. that's two, go around, pull it through and down, 
Okay. And what I like to do is to finish it off, I go around and through the hole three or four times. And what that does, that means the braided line's going to come out the other way. So you'll see this in a minute. Just moisten it up, pull it all down. Sorry about that. Pull it down. I don't know how well you can see that, but the actual line is coming down about three winds down from the top. And that's the way I like to finish it off. Just get the snippers and get that mono cut off really close. And that's really important to uh, chop it off close. You do not want to cut your line though. So you get it nice and tight. You do not want to cut that braided line. Okay, so the knot's coming together. Now on these lighter lines, when it's about 20 or 30 pound, if you've got too much of a, a bump over the top there, you can go back over it again, but basically that's the knot right there. Cut it off. Nice and close. And there we go, a beautiful FG knot. Super strong, won't be breaking there. The line might break up here or down below, but it will not be breaking at that knot. It is very strong. Okay, I'm going to give myself a nice little overhand here. So what I'll do is, just for the sinker on the bottom, pull it in, push it through the hole, and just do that three times. Okay, and that'll hold the sinker. Just cut that straight off. And then you can do all sorts of fancy loops, loop knots. But what I'm going to do here is again just do exactly that same knot I just did. Just flip it over on itself, fold the line in half, flip it over on itself and run it through three times. Put it up nice and tight. Okay. We can just slide that hook straight on by, by simply just again, pushing the line, get through, and pull that up. There we go, that's on. All we need now is to get the sinker. on down the bottom, just through over the top and back through, and there we have it. We put the mullet on, got the sinker sitting on the bottom, the mullet will be swimming around, and as soon as one of those predators see it, come pouncing in and hook up. Alright, live bait. Ivy. Just flick a couple of scales off, put him through. He'll be swimming away happily, waiting to be eaten. Alright, there's a lot of in that hole there. Put him down. Check the drag, always really important to check that drag. Nice and firm. I might just loosen it up a little bit. Oh, there we go. We're on already. Oh, look at that. That's a, that's got to be a jewfish. That has to be a jewfish. He's gone down that crack. Oh my God, he's going. Oh, oh pop me. <laughs> wow. Didn't that thing go? Here we. Look at my drag. It's like it can hardly get it off there. <laughs> that was a good jew. Wow, he must have gone out those rocks and out the other side. It'll be 
not much of my rig left, I can imagine. Probably near zero. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, I can tell you now it didn't break, but it was cut off. Cut off on all those rocks. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully, get the rig up again. Hopefully, what's that? Fourth time lucky. <laughs> Lost two barra and a Jew. Oh my god. Yeah, some big fish there. Eh? Big fish. That was a Jew. Big paddle. Give me a go. Holy moly. Okay. Back to the drawing board. <laughs>